one of the most significant and, in fact, transformative environmental issues that clients will continue to deal with in the next 25, 50, even 100 years is going to be climate change. It affects what clients do, how they do it, where they do it, and the cost of them doing it. It creates significant enterprise risk for them. The risks right now are incalculable. And it's early in the phases of regulation, and there are still a lot of things that need to be worked through in terms of the legal infrastructure. Environmental health and safety practice essentially does four things. One, we counsel clients across a range of industries throughout the world regarding environmental compliance issues. Second, we advocate for clients throughout the world on a range of issues with respect to product approvals, with respect to regulatory interpretations, and with respect to obtaining permits and approvals from various regulatory government authorities. The third thing we do, we do a lot of it, is we litigate. We litigate offensively and defensively on behalf of clients, civilly, criminally. Significant high-stakes litigation involving really significant enterprise risk for the company. For example, recently we represented a client in connection with climate change tort suits, filed three different jurisdictions. We ultimately prevailed in the U.S. Supreme Court. The final thing we do is we advise clients in connection with legacy environmental liabilities, either that they have or they might buy through asset acquisitions or divestitures or in the context of bankruptcy. One is our, the distribution of our talent and the depth of our talent and the fact that we, unlike most other firms that are worldwide, actually have environmental lawyers in most of our, that are resident in most of our offices. The second thing is, uh, I would say, the fact that a good number of our environmental lawyers actually are litigators. A lot of the other firms worldwide and certainly in the U.S. that have an environmental practice, they're mostly counselors. And they engage in advocacy of one kind or another, but nothing on the scale or scope that we do. And the final thing I think that's distinguishing about our practice is we're, we're driven by success of the client, not individual successes.